Hello everyone, K Keem here from Traders Club. I uh, hope you guys are having a great weekend. I thought I'll do a quick video update for my block followers. Uh, I know it is. I mean, it's been a while since I have done a video there, but you know, I've been uh, doing my updates through a Twitter and the um, you know writing some blog posts here and there. And recently, I wrote in a blog post on the spider where I think the spider will get to about 174. I will talk about that here in this video and just kind of give you guys a heads up on that. But you know, one of the biggest theme that uh, we've been talking about here at the Traders Club is the old resistance, new support. Uh, one of the one of the thing that I've been talking a lot about it is because that's how it has been really climbing up. We're looking at the spider here, and that that's exactly what it's been doing. What I mean by old resistance, new supports, many times the old resistance. Uh, you know, many times it becomes a support, and then it, it it can it can it can be helpful to use that old resistance as a new support and to climb up. So one of the things that we can see from this chart and spider daily chart here is that well, this was this was kind of a vicinity that we you know back in the um, right here, which was that this is a February two thousand thirteen, and this level was uh, on uh, September here um, on. September 2012, this was the uh, old resistance and now became a new support. As you can see, this old resistance, new support. And that has been the theme throughout ever since then. You can see that this was an old resistance, this was resistance of February 2013, and this became old new support at um, April 2013. Again, old resistance, new support. And that something similar happened back here though we it has been compromised a little bit it came down broke that below this level and this was a level where I was pre you know I was I was um, bearish on that uh, just you know on after it broke in this level because well you can see that this was over resistance it became a new support here you can see that it came down and then kind of bounced that so all resistance new support worked out here for for about several weeks here in this vicinity and then and then we just came down, we broke that level. Well, thankfully, I guess we uh, found support in this vicinity, um, which was kind of the 100 SMA level. And really that was a level that, um, you know, many people are looking. Um, I, you know, to be honest with you, that was a level, I don't think not many people are looking. That was a level that many people thought that this was gonna continue. Maybe we're gonna have a, some kind of bear flag and then continue, which even myself, I was also thinking that that was going to happen, but you know, another thing we've been looking at was this pivotal level. This was the level, the neckline level. This, if this was going to be a double top pattern, this neckline was, you know, supposed to hold, and bears needed to protect the level for the further correction of move. The reason behind that is many times when we have these kind of a, like a triple top or double top formation. You can see that that's a neckline. It likes to get back up to test that level, and then you know the the the, the correction move happens. Similar thing you know, happened here. This was the neckline came down. It went up for a few days, and then the correction happened there. And so you know over here when this was the neckline, you know I guess came down, and then you know went back up. And that wasn't surprising when it back, went back up though. Uh, but you know what happened was um, you know we 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 just we just broke that we just kept going higher so then we never had that correction of move instead we just had a continuation of a bullish move so uh, but what I'm what I'm saying is basically that that you know that you know pretty much this old resistance we, we came down a little bit but came back down we held and we went higher so today what we're looking at is we're looking at again the Pretty same concept, pretty similar concept here is that well, this was the old resistance from back in May 2012, 22, 22nd, and then now we're finding support here. That was a level we're looking at. Not only that, that level is coinciding with this long term uptrend support. As you can see, that this has been respected and supported as a good looking support here and here. We it was compromised, it was broken at one point. So, this level, the intent integrity of this support has kind of somewhat diminished, not somewhat, but it diminished a lot. And this is a level that it, it can't, it shouldn't be trusted that much just because we it has been compromised. However, you know, when it is coinciding with, you know, the horizontal 
a uh, pivotal level again you know why did I draw here and not at the wick go to your line chart and you know why when you're looking at the pivotal level it is it is imperative to see that you look at your line chart as well especially when we're at all time high when we're dealing with all time high and when you're dealing with the horizontal uh, pivotal level when you're dealing with the horizontal pivotal level and you know and up trust level as well is that you gotta uh, Look at your line chart and then see where that line chart lines. And this is a line chart. And so what happened was many times what happens when we break that level, it likes to test that old resistance as new support as it has been doing all this time that I've been uh, explaining here. So that was a level that you know we've been we've been talking about, we've been looking at for about a week. This last whole week, uh, we've been talking about the level that that was a level that if we're gonna find some support, that was a level that we're gonna find some support there. And you know Friday we found we found some support there. We we kind of bounced from there. So what's happening right now? Just looking at the recent price action. Well, first of all, you can see that we're finding support at this 10 EMA. So we're not even even able to break below 10 EMA. Even in this day, we we're able. To to kind of close below that went back up and came down so you know any kind of momentum to kind of start I mean very early stage of a momentum shifting action you want to see at least uh, you know any stocks or indices kind of close below that 10 and then once we close below the 10 you can say that maybe that early stage of that shifting momentum shifting is happening it doesn't mean it has to roll over but just because it you know it could be close below 10 EMA, it just kind of as a reference point, we are starting to build a little bit of the momentum and, and this is where we kind of pay attention and, you know, and, and kind of uh, adjust our long, you know, if we have any long position. But what happened was we never closed below 10 EMA and that, that will also coinciding with this horizontal, um, you know, the all time high pivot there, which is old resistance, possibly new support. And then going along with that, you know, you guys seen that, um, the, 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 the long-term uptrend support so when all that vicinity kind of like hanging there this was the focal point and that we're finding support greatly in my opinion and so what happened was we had a, some selling pressure on these two days last uh, Wednesday and Tuesday right uh, there's yeah Wednesday and Tuesday we had some selling pressure we did have some volume coming in um, what happened was net lot the next two days Wednesday Thursday and Friday we're pretty much nullifying whatever the pressure is happening again it's all about the momentum kind of thing you know once you get this kind of candle with this kind of volume selling volume after this kind of extended session you pay attention because you know because we're on a primary uptrend for this primary uptrend for bears to shift the momentum they need to come with a lot of force and that's exactly what they did here there are some resilient from the bulls gap that up but that you know bears came back down with another force and then they were able to push it down you can see that this kind of candle is you know what i like to call momentum shifting candle huge huge power behind it a lot of selling pressure and uh, just big big monsters to candle after this kind of bullish run but you know this candle right here you can see that volume is rather weak it's not like what we saw so I, you know, what I was talking about is we're dealing with some different beast here. You see that the volume is not quite same as what we saw in last, uh, what, June, mid-June, late June to late May. So this, when this, when that candle came about, you know, I, 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 I was talking about that, that that's not the same though it's gonna it's a cautionary cautionary signal for sure because there is bearish engulfing but you know it, it's 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 different breed it's not like these guys right here those guys those those bearish engulfing pattern were very very much uh you know had a lot of potency that it carried uh, behind it because it came with a, such a heavy selling pressure that we can feel you know we can able to feel that pressure coming in but when this day come about I mean we had some selling pressure but it just felt a little bit weak but one of the one of the thing that was like, well let's see one of the thing I was talking about is what we need if, if you know bulls gonna continue they cannot have a follow-through day which means like a huge gap down or follow-through on the bearish day we need kind of a slowing down action kind of a breaking down like breaking down is slowing down breaking you're driving your car and you're breaking like that's that's kind of the action you need uh, we're looking for and that's exactly what we got last two days you can see that Thursday we kind of broke you know we had that breaking action and we slow it down and we're above 10 and we gapped down on Friday but again we came back 
up, slow it down. So what happened was, if I just look at the volume here, you can see that volume is pretty much matched with whatever the selling volume here on third on Wednesday. So we are pretty much, you know, this is starting to look a lot like bull flag right above this 10 EMA here and looking bullish. I am and it's looking bullish. And my price target on Spider is here. Let me. I'm just going to show you here real quick where I got that. 174 my uh, price target on spider is 174 and let me just kind of give you guys that why i think it's 174 you can see this was the um this level right here is a march 2009 after a market crash and we found that v bottom here and if i just draw this trading lane this is what we call trading lane um some people call it a fan line doesn't matter um, what it what it is how you call it it's just what you have to understand about this is this is a level that spider likes to trade in this boundary which means it goes up and down and then changes lane and then it respects these levels just like when you're driving in these lanes you must you can change lanes but once you're driving in that in that lane you have to respect these lines so that's exactly what spider's been doing here 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 you can see how well it respects it does change lanes when it does change lanes it goes straight through but then it 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 respects these levels what happened was last time when we had a huge wind that we had that fall in late may that was right at that level of this trading lane and what i'm thinking is that we are getting going back to that level which is about 174 ish level this is a 174 ish level right here um doesn't mean that we're going to get there it's going to tank it means that this is a level we're going to be watching very, very closely because that's a level that we could possibly even have, you know, huge, I don't know, maybe we could have a huge, you know, head and shoulder formation just like it did here. But again, I'm just speculating. I'm not saying that's what is going to happen. What I'm saying is when you get to about 74, we got to pay attention because these levels has been worked as a very, very strong resistance level before and then that pivotal level here. It did it here, it did it here. So this is trading lane that I'll be paying attention and I'm going to continue to pay attention and that's 174. And I thought, you know what, let me just, count, let's just count, you know, let's just confirm that and just let me use a, using, let's use a Fibonacci extension tool and see if we can kind of confirm that level as possible, you know, because I mean that level is very, in my opinion, very legit and you just, I've just shown you, demonstrated that trading lane has been very well respected by the spider. So, but let me just, you know, let me just do a double confirmation on that and see if we can see that 174 level as, um, you know, you know, let's see what, what Fibonacci level says. Basically here we're looking at Fibonacci. Uh, let me get rid of that here. I don't think that's going to be relevant at this point. So I'm basically measuring this move right here to possibly forecast, um, you know, next run up move. Uh, which is using, you know, this is as 100%, this is 0%. I'm putting 138.2% on Fibonacci, which is a Fibonacci extension level that I love to use. This is a sequence I like to use just looking at the short term kind of a kind of pull up there. So basically, you can see that this is a 174, 138.2% right here, this 174 level. So basically, this Fibonacci extension, it also agrees with that trading line I just shown you that 174 is where it's going. So, you know, obviously, you know, we would have to close above there for a full confirmation, which is about one, 170. We close above 170. I, I, I'm very high likely, high probability. I'd be pretty confident that this thing is going to grow 174, even beyond, I think. But I think 174 is going to be, is going to be where it's headed. And if we can get above 174, and we start, you know, you get some kind of huge bearish engulfing or any kind of bearish reversal pattern at that level, well, then the danger can start to come because then we could be possibly, you know, forming something very significant to what we saw last, um, let's see here, last May here. Because what happened was, let me just put a Fibonacci on last May, right there, you can see that last May, this was a, 
This was when we hit up a bullish run. Looks pretty similar to today's action. What happened? This is not last May. This is a 2011 May. I lied. 2011 May, so about two years ago there. Um, what happened was, you know, this market was very resilient. It just continued going, 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 just like what we what we saw today. And then we came down. We kind of had that initial double bottom pattern here. We, we broke below this neckline, and then we went back up, but we just kept going. What does it remind you? Of? What happened? Re what happened recently on June? Um, and then we had a little bit of pullback and then we went back up. It went back up to essentially 128.6% rather than 138.2%. But what happened was instead of kind of making new highs and then coming in to make new lows, it just started tanking. We just came in here, made it this flat lows. Once you see these flat lows and, you know, um, you know, not making higher low, then you can have, you, there's a cautionary signal there because we did not make a higher low. Instead, we made a flat low with higher high and that's a possible head and shoulder formation. But for this to get out, it needed to make another high. If they didn't do that, we kind of stopped short here and now we made this huge, huge, um, signal of head and shoulder pattern and then this thing just crashed in about two weeks this thing came down so fast and so let's come back to today's action here so what does this remind you of doesn't it kind of look like last May not last but again 2011 May doesn't it remind you of that it kind of went up we had this resilient bull market here and what happened was well we came down and we formed a double bottom and then we you know broke the neckline but we came right back we had a little bit of pullback and so if it, if it goes to about 174 level and it could come down but what you need to do is make a new low and then go higher but if it goes up and comes all the way down to make flat lows just like May 2011 and it goes up and it stops short and make that right shoulder level for the first time we made what lower high then we can able to expect this huge monstrous head and shoulder formation just like last May 2011 and that will be a trouble because we're so so far up you can see how far up we are we're right here so let me get rid of remove those things here so you can see that we had a head and shoulder formation bang right and so we're right here we're at this uptrend here and uh, so if we form head and shoulder in this form at this level, I mean, I mean, this thing could all day come down to here. Again, I'm just giving you guys kind of roadmap and heads of what could possibly happen. Does not mean that it's going to happen. But for now, what I do think that it's going to come and that this thing is going to come probably about 174. And then we got to reassess the situation we get to that level. And until then, um, you know, until then, um, you know, I, I believe the market is going to continue to chug higher, continue to grind higher. And I will it, really, though, looking at the weekly chart, it looks like we can go to in a bullish market for next a month or so, uh, which I talked about on the on the article that I talked about. Um, the title that bulls dodging bullets. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and uh, uh, take a look at that. Which I look at and do an uh, do an analyze on a weekly chart basis, looking at the huge big picture. You're looking at that. This market looks very very strong, very very bullish, which it could get up to next four weeks, five six weeks of bullish run. But just a recent looking at these trading lanes and Fibonacci extension level, I I think that we can able to get up here about 174. Um, that's the, my target there. Again, that's the same level that Fibonacci extension level confirmed and also that trading lane, top of the trading lane that comes to about 174. Uh, that's the level there. And quickly, I will look at uh, Apple here. Um, it's been a while since I've given you guys this um, video analysis here, but you guys know that I've been writing journal about it on Apple and what it what I think about Apple here. Let me just first of all, there's a problem is we have a low volume and uh, you know one of the thing about that is you know that's that's a some big that's a that's a pretty good size candle. Um you know last time we had these candles we had some good volumes that came in with it. You can see that right here and right here you see some good volume even this day had a good volume but why is that on this day we had a gap down and in and with a pushed up we I thought we would have some volume there we didn't so that's a concern doesn't mean just because of this thing's just let's roll over but because we're in a primary downtrend in Apple because of that you can see that we're still in a primary downtrend one thing I talk a lot about you know 
uh, with members is that, well, you know, it, it just think about the ocean. If you're in the middle of the ocean, if you're not really moving hard, where is it going to take you? Well, it's going to take you where the tide is going, where the whole big current is going. Right. So in this in this in this case, where is a big tide going? Well, the big tide is moving to the downside still because we're in a primary downtrend. So when we're not moving so fast and moving so hard, which, you know, it's not backed up with the, with the volume, volume equal fuel, you get out fuel, there isn't much strength, there isn't much momentum, there isn't much, you know, push. Um, so because of that, you know, I really think that if we don't get a big move next Monday or Tuesday, we need to, I mean, I'm, I'm long on this, so I'm giving you, I'm not just going to sit here and say, oh man, this thing is going to go 500, this is going to go 550. No, it, the true analysis, good technical analysis, what they do is they bring both cases, because they're always, I always say, there's a two legitimate questions or argument on both sides. In any case, doesn't matter if Apple going bankrupt, you can always find bullish argument. You can always find bearish argument. Analysis, what they need to do is bring both argument on the table and then go with whatever there's a heavier, heavier, a weightier matter. And if the matter is 50-50, then you just don't take any action. You don't get in a long or short position. You just kind of wait until you see more, uh, you know, lucid uh, argument. But for now, you know, bearish argument is we're in a primary downtrend and, um, you know, we have a low volume last two days. This should be uh, some some of a volume breakout there, but we didn't. We didn't. So the longer we start start to smooth sideways, there's a more that is going to favor to bears because the tide is moving to the downside. The big current, you know, primary downtrend is moving to the downside, just like you're in the ocean. If you're not moving, it's going to take you. So what it needs to do. Apple, I'm a bullish on Apple, I'm an Apple bull, so for those of you who are long under Apple, what you need to do, what you need to see is Apple actually can actually making some progress early as on Monday or Tuesday with some volume coming in. If we don't get a volume, if we don't get some move to the upside, we start to move sideways, well, that's not a good sign. We're going to start to slip down here and then start to fill this gap and this thing is going to roll over and retest this about 380 level okay so that's what we need to see first of all there's a good sign of this thing about this level here is first of all 100 sma and 10 ma start to they start to meet here you can see that all these moving averages start to um really come together that's a great sign because what they're doing is they may have a meeting what what meeting they're making a meeting what are we going to thrust higher at this level or are we going to roll over that's what they're talking about just like what they talked about back here they met here and they talked about what are we going to do well they decided that this thing is going to tank but what happened is here we do not know it so what ha what i'm saying is this is a make or break level Either this thing gonna start to go higher, make a new trend, maybe even change its primary uptrend at this vicinity, or we just gonna roll over. Okay. One other thing I talked about, I've been talking about a long time, is that let's look at the behavior of last last time when when Apple crashed. And Apple crashed here. This was a uh, you know this was when we had a market crash. Apple crashed, and we had a consolidation pattern here. And what happened was. Um, you know, that's 50 MA really irritated the, the, the Apple here. You can see we tanked, we tanked here, we, you know what I mean? And then 100 SMA came about, and, you know, I always say that 100 SMA is a long-term moving average. It carries that radiant, you know, radiant, not radiant, radiation of resistance so that, you know, just because we're above 100 SMA doesn't mean that this thing is going to new a high. It's just, it's just because that 100 SMA being that long-term uh, moving average, it carries a radiant, radiance um why am i keep saying that radiation of resistance so what i'm saying is <laughs> this this whole vicinity is going to uh is is going to act as resistance of this because, because these are long-term moving average and, and and you can see the 50 ma how well it's been respected just right on cue here but 100 sma is not the same you can see they went up but then just kind of you know so Anyway, so what happened is um, after this kind of a consolidation pattern and Apple kind of start to make new moves here and just really, really found that bottoming uh, process here and just, just start to make new highs. And this was the last time we saw anything close to hundreds or, you know, like uh, less than hundred here. But for the first time, what, what, what happened since the crash, you can see this was a crash, was the first clue was that 100 SMA and that 50 MA acting, not acting, but crossing 
to the upside. We have not seen this and we attempted here that failed. And then so we're attempting here again and that succeeded and that was it. Apple just soared and this thing went to about 700. So let's go back, where's my chart here? Let's go back today, action here. Very, very similar to today's action, though it's a little bit different situation, but similar in the perspective of how we came down and what are the levels that it has been respected. You can see the 50 MA really agitated. Apple here, we came down to 100 SMA. We we're really not able to close above that. We close above a few days. Again, the radiate radiation of resistance from that 100 SMA just closing above that for a couple of days does not make that it's gonna it's above 100 SMA we're good to go it just you know it, it, it acted as a kind of a you know long-term resistance there again this is exactly what I'm saying we are above 100 SMA for three days but again what did I say the radiation of resistance um, that's we're still not out of the woods yet but one of the thing I am looking at is you can see the angle of the 100 SMA and the angle of the 50 MA the 100 SMA for the longest time it's been coming down but it's starting to little bit you can see little bit trying to make a move to the upside but at least moving sideways here and you can see how close that 100 SMA and the 50 MA I know we tried over here that 100 SMA and 50 MA across to the upside we failed this is a second time just like last time when we crashed if we can close if we can cross above if the 100 SMA go to the upside 50 MA start to cross here I would have to say Apple looking great if we see it again just because it crossed just one day does it has to be well crossed and start to separate and next pivot level to you know close above for about 455 and then this level here about 460 we have a lot of resistance here but and then also 200 SMA coming up here so um, these are the levels that need to break above to able to see Apple finally getting out of the slump and even make its run to 500, 550 and just filling these gaps until, but we cannot see that happening. And first thing, again, like I said, we cannot move sideways. Next few weeks, next few days, Monday and Tuesday, we need Apple start moving higher with volume coming in, all right? And then what we, and in that process, we will see that 100 SMA and 50 main crossing. And if that happens, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe that Apple will come out of this slump and uh, we'll see some good future. I mean, I don't think that, you know, it's going to go to 700 in about a month or two, but I think it's going to have its grind action for some time. It's going to take some, it's going to have that, you know, healing process. So it's going to, got, it, it has to make that higher high, higher low kind of action. It can't just go straight up. It's going to go up, down, up, down. And we start seeing that higher lows and higher highs. We start seeing that I would have to say that Apple is uh, Apple's its way up and start to make a good uh, progress there. One other thing, lastly, before I let you guys go, I do want to talk about this Apple weekly chart, and then I'll close this um, video here. And what I wanted, what I wanted to see, this is a weekly chart on Apple. What I want you to see is this. This is MACD here, and the weekly chart, weekly MACD, weekly. This is 200 SMA. Um, on weekly uh, weekly level 200 weekly last time when we had that crash here with this huge double top pattern what was the savior the 200 SMA was the savior 200 SMA we grind all around it and what happened was in those times of grind kind of a healing process if you will well MACD starting to move higher as you can see that MACD started making these you know MACD starting to kind of really bottom down here start making uh, it started grinding higher. That was kind of a, what is, you know, what MACD is saying that the accumulation phase started and starting to look well. And so, you know, you can see that we kind of move sideways, MACD kind of going higher, and then we started trading above 200 SMA, and this thing just took off on the weekly chart here. Well, we have a very, very good signal looking at the weekly chart, 200 SMA. You can see that we found support right at this weekly 200 SMA. Not only that, at this time of kind of a you know moving sideways looking at this big picture kind of you know trying to bottom here what happened to what happened to MACD well MACD started making highs make really rolling up here really finding look at the angle and and that level is very similar to what we saw back here 200 SMA 200 SMA MACD going higher MACD going higher 
I like that. I like that. So for confirmation of this bottom, it's going to be about four. But to be safe, looking at this big picture weekly chart, we close about 470. This thing probably, again, we're looking at a very, very big picture, very, very big picture, 550, 600. We can see that happening because I love the fact that MACD is really, really just chugging higher here and really, really pointing up here. All right, so hope this been helpful to you guys and, uh, um, you know, and, uh, you know, this uh, this analysis and I hope to um, that this has been helpful to your uh, your own analysis on your own trades and coming into next week and uh, maybe uh, weeks ahead. So we'll have a great weekend and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.